the history of the Boeing 737. The Boeing 737 has been one of the most successful aircraft of all time. As of mid-2020, it remains the most delivered aircraft to date, but has been overtaken by the Airbus A320 for orders. First flying in 1967, it has evolved through several variants, each time improving and updating its offering. Let's take a look at the history of this long-serving aircraft and examine what kind of future it might have. The 737 was envisioned in the 1960s as a supplement and eventual replacement to the Boeing 727. It has remained in production ever since, moving through four different generations, each with several variants to serve different airline requirements. To date, 10,580 737 aircraft have been delivered, with 14,801 ordered. Part of this success has been its well-engineered design and Boeing's periodic updates to meet airline demands. The 737 was designed to beat the competition. At the time, this was mainly the Douglas DC-9, but also the BAC-111 and the Caravelle from Sud Aviation. It may not seem as obvious today with the prevalence of twin-engine aircraft flying, but at the time of its design and launch, one of the key offerings of the 737 was two engines. The Boeing aircraft preceding it, the 707 and the 727, were four- and three-engine aircraft respectively. Market attention was shifting to a more economical two-engine possibility, hence the 737. While other manufacturers were also developing twin-engine aircraft, Boeing opted for a very different design, which ultimately proved very successful. It mounted the two engines under the wings, whereas many other manufacturers chose to mount the engines on the rear of the fuselage. This move allowed the 737 to feature six across seating. At the time, five across was typical with other manufacturers. It also meant that standard width freight containers could be loaded, allowing passenger cargo combination variants to become popular with many airlines. Maintenance was easier too, with engines closer to the ground. Construction of the first 737 aircraft took place at Boeing Field in Seattle, in the same building where aircraft such as the B-17 Flying Fortress and the B-52 Strato Fortress were built. According to Boeing, this building was not large enough to accommodate the 737's tail, which was added outside the building before the aircraft was transferred to the new production line. Production soon moved to Renton, Washington, where it remains today. The first 737 aircraft was unveiled on January 17, 1967. The festivities included a christening by flight attendants representing the 17 airlines that had ordered the new plane. The first aircraft launch was the 737-100. The launch customer was Germany's Lufthansa, the first non-US-based airline to launch a Boeing aircraft. It first flew in February 1968. The 737-100 featured two Pratt & Whitney JT-8D low-bypass engines. It was smaller than any model that followed it, offering a typical two-class capacity of just 85, with a maximum exit limit of 124. Only 30 737-100 aircraft were ever delivered, as it was soon improved by the 737-200. The Dash 200 quickly followed the Dash 100, entering service with United Airlines in April 1968. The main difference was an extended fuselage requested by United and preferred by most airlines. This offered a typical seating capacity of 102. The Dash 200 also had improved engines, and these were also JT-8D engines but with higher thrust. Sales of the new jet were slow and Boeing even considered cancelling the project in the early days. However, it picked up with an order from the US Air Force for 19 T-43 military variants. A 737-200 advanced model was then launched in 1971 and included improved aerodynamics, higher thrust engines and increased fuel capacity and range. These improvements worked well and the 737-200 went on to sell 1,095 aircraft with production lasting until 1988. The focus on meeting customer requirements continued, and an unpaved strip kit option was available. This allowed landing on gravel runways, which were common in remote areas of Canada and Alaska. Boeing also developed a convertible version for passenger and cargo use, the 737-200C. This variant had a larger cargo door and strengthened cabin floor. In total, 104 were delivered. Boeing went on to make several improvements for the next generation of 737s, 
The Classic series was launched with the Dash 300 in 1984. Despite many changes and improvements, the new models kept commonality in both design and flight operation with earlier models. This minimized the need for additional pilot training. The main changes in the Classic series, the 737, Dash 300, Dash 400 and Dash 500 were improvements in capacity and fuel efficiency. The Dash 300 was powered by new CFM 56 turbofan engines offering increased thrust. However, with a larger engine diameter, these had to be placed ahead of the wing due to the 737's low ground clearance. This series also saw an increase in wingspan and extension of the wing tips. This offered improved aerodynamics. The design of the vertical stabilizer was also new. The Classic series marked the real start of the success of the 737 family. These jets remained in production until 2000, with a total of 1,988 aircraft delivered. The Classic series had three variants offering different capacities and range. The 737-300 was the middle-sized option with a typical two-class capacity of 126. The Dash 400 was three meters longer than the Dash 300, increasing capacity to 188. However, its range was 300 kilometers less than the Dash 300. The Dash 500 was a smaller model, having a typical two-class capacity of 110. However, its smaller size increased its range 200 kilometers beyond the Dash 200. The next major update to the 737 started in 1991, when Boeing began working on the 737 Next Generation Series, or 737NG. Officially launching in 1993, the first aircraft did not fly until December 1997, entering service with Southwest Airlines. Fuel efficiency was the main improvement with the series. This was to compete with the A320 as well as address the high oil prices at the time. It also offered improved range and higher capacity options than the Classic series. The 737NG was a significant update to the 737, sporting a new airframe and wing design. The jets in this series also had a glass cockpit. Again, this series still maintained commonality with previous 737 variants, helping airlines with maintenance and crew operations. The main aircraft updates included the following. Upgraded CFM 56-7 engines with improved fuel efficiency. A redesigned wing with increased span and area and allowing increased fuel capacity. And a new digital cockpit. If you're liking this video so far, why not click subscribe and hit the like button? Oh, and be sure to click that notification bell too. There are four 737NG models of different sizes. These are the Dash 600, Dash 700, Dash 800 and the Dash 900. The Dash 600 first flew with SAS in 1998 and is the smallest variant, with a typical two-class capacity of just 108 and an exit limit of 149. Its size made it a perfect replacement for the Dash 500 and as a competitor for the A318. The 737-700 is stretched by around 2.4 metres, making its typical capacity 128. This was actually the first variant launched, entering service with Southwest Airlines. The Dash 700 was also offered as a convertible cargo version, known as the 737-700C. The 737-800 entered service in April 1998 with Hapag Lloyd Flug, later to become TUI Fly. It stretched even further than the 737-700 with a passenger capacity of around 189. This has actually been the best selling of any 737 variant, totaling up 4,991 orders. The longest version, the 737-900, entered service last in 2000. An extended range version, the 737-900ER, increased range as well as passenger capacity up to a maximum of 220 as it added a second set of exit doors. Boeing has been offering business jet versions of the 737 since the late 1980s with the 737-300. The series was expanded and renamed as Boeing Business Jet or BBJ with the 737-NG series. Three BBJ variants are offered. BBJ-1, first flying in September 1998, was based on the 737-700. BBJ-2 was first delivered in 2001 and was based on the larger Dash 800. 
it offers increased range and cabin space. And the BBJ3 is a larger variant based on the Dash 900 ER. Only three BBJ3 jets have been ordered, compared to 121 BBJ1 and 23 BBJ2 aircraft. The BBJ series was launched with the 737NG, but it covers other aircraft as well. There are BBJ versions of the 737 MAX, as well as the 757, 767, 777, 787 and 747. Boeing announced the 737 MAX series in 2011 and introduced it in May 2017 with the Indonesian airline Melindo Air. MAX development was mainly a response to Airbus's highly efficient A320neo family of jets. Like the next generation series, the MAX series has four variants of differing capacity and range. These are the Dash 7, Dash 8, Dash 9 and Dash 10. These offer further improvements over the next generation models, but of course at an increased cost. There's also a 737 MAX 200, which is a high capacity version of the MAX 8 that's been ordered by Ryanair. This has additional exits to allow more passenger capacity. Delivery was delayed with a grounding of the 737 MAX, but Ryanair hopes to take delivery of this by 2021. The 737 MAX may offer improvements in efficiency, capacity and range, but it has also been plagued with problems. The type was involved in two fatal crashes. Line Air Flight 610 in October 2018 and Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 in March 2019. Following Ethiopian's incident, the aircraft was grounded by aviation authorities around the world. The problem centered on the MAX's Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, or MCAS. This system is designed to move the nose down if an increased angle of attack is detected, to help avoid a stall. Several problems surrounded the system, including erroneous readings from sensors and the removal of specific MCAS descriptions from aircraft manuals. As of August 2020, changes have been made to the MAX's flight control systems, and test flights have been completed by the FAA and Transport Canada. This is the first stage of recertification of the type, and Boeing is hopeful this will happen by the end of 2020. The grounding has been costly for Boeing. As of July 2020, the manufacturer has accrued over $9 billion in liability. It has also, of course, suffered reputational damage and numerous order cancellations. For a long time, the 737 was the best-selling narrow-body aircraft, beating the competition with its innovations and focus on improvements to meet customer requirements. Airbus changed this with the A320 and its updated NEO, new engine option, versions. It has been quicker at launching new, more efficient versions and has gained market share. The grounding of the 737 MAX gave Airbus a further boost, and in late 2019, the A320 moved ahead of the 737 for aircraft sold. As of July 2020, Boeing has 14,801 orders across the whole 737 family, but Airbus has moved ahead with 15,572 orders for the A320 family. Boeing is still ahead in deliveries for the time being. In July 2020, Boeing updated its plan for reduced construction of aircraft due to the slowdown in aviation. In a letter sent to staff, CEO David Calhoun explained the reasoning. The reality is the pandemic's effect on the aviation sector continues to be severe. This pressure on our commercial customers means they are delaying jet purchases, slowing deliveries, deferring elective maintenance, retiring older aircraft and reducing spend, all of which affects our business and ultimately our bottom line. To align to a smaller market, we lowered commercial production rates and took tough workforce actions throughout the quarter. As of July 2020, it's still not clear what the next version of the 737 will look like, but based on previous plans from Boeing, there could be a major redesign coming. Boeing first proposed changes to the 737 as part of the Yellowstone project. This looked at updates to all aircraft series using new technologies, electrical control systems and composite structures. The 787 was delivered as part of this, but the project has stalled for the 737, with Boeing launching the 737 MAX in 2011 instead of pursuing a full 737 replacement. There have been more developed plans for a larger aircraft though. In 2015, it was reported that Boeing was pursuing a new mid-sized aircraft or NMA 
possibly entering service in the mid-2020s and perhaps taking the 797 name. It would be a twin-aisle, seven-across aircraft with both 225 and 275-seat variants. It would not really be a replacement for the 737, but rather addresses a gap between the 737 and the larger wide-body market. This has been put on hold while Boeing focuses instead on returning the 737 MAX to service. The slowdown may well have given Boeing some time to look again at the NMA design as well as options for the 737. However, we'll just have to wait and see what Boeing has to offer the industry in the next few years. What do you think of the 737 single aisle market dominance? Let us know what you think in the comment section. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.